Each of the interval notations represents the solution set of the inequality below. So we solve inequalities almost exactly like equalities, except there's one catch. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, then you have to flip the inequality to make it face the other direction. So here we have minus 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 11. We start by subtracting 5 on both sides. This leaves us with minus 2x is less than or equal to 11 minus 5 is 6. Then we divide both sides by minus 2. That cancels the negative 2 in front of the x. And it leaves us with x is. And now we have to flip the inequality so it faces the other direction because we divided both sides by negative. 6 divided by minus 2 is negative 3. So my list of possible solutions are all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 3. In interval notation, we write this like this. Uh, square bracket, negative 3. The square bracket is facing my negative 3 because I'm including it. My x is allowed to be equal to negative 3. And it goes all the way up to the maximum value of positive infinity. We can't include infinity, so we have the bracket facing away. And this looks like d. Question two. Two square-based pyramids are similar. The lateral area of the larger pyramid is 320 meters squared. The slant height of the larger pyramid is 16 meters. The slant height of the smaller pyramid is 9.6 meters. What is the lateral area of the smaller pyramid? The key thing here to see is that these two pyramids are similar which means that we'll be able to use our similarity constants k, k squared, or k cubed. In this case, comparing the two slant heights will give us k. Big divided by small means I do 16 divided by 9.6. This gives me 1.67. Since I'm going from lateral area to lateral area, area to area, I need k squared. To get k squared, I take my k, which is 1.67, and I square it. 1.67 squared is approximately 2.79. Now since I'm going from big pyramid to small pyramid, I'm going to divide the lateral area of the big one to find the lateral area of the small one. That means 320 divided by 2.79 should be the answer to my question. That gives 114.69. Now I've done some rounding, and if you don't round, if you use all the decimals on your calculator, and the answer should come out to 115.2. And we're not far from that answer. We get 114.69, not far from 115.2. Question three, what is the simplified algebraic expression? So here we have a fraction where the numerator is a binomial multiplied to another binomial. And the denominator is just the number six. So what I'd like to do is begin by distributing my multiplication. This is called foiling. The first term gets multiplied to both terms in the second bracket, and the second term in the first bracket gets multiplied to both terms in the second bracket. What this is going to give me is 4 times 3, 12, x times x, x squared. And then 4x times 6 will give positive 24x. Negative 8 times 3x is negative 24x. And finally, negative 8 times 6 is negative 48. All of this is still over 6. 
Now I'm going to notice that these two middle terms, positive 24x and negative 24x, cancel each other. So if I continue simplifying this, I'm left with 12x squared minus 48 over 6. Now I need to distribute my division. I'm dividing the top by the bottom. Everything on top gets divided by 6. I'm distributing the 6 into the 12x squared and into the negative 48. 12 divided by 6 is 2x squared. Minus 48 divided by 6 is minus 8. The answer is 2x squared minus 8c. Question 4. On the disc-shaped target below, the square is inside the circle. The diameter of the circle is 15 centimeters. A point is chosen randomly from this target. What is the probability to the nearest percentage that the chosen point is in the shaded area? So here, probability of being in shaded is equal to area wanted, the wanted area, which is area shaded, divided by the total area, and the entire shape, the total shape, is the shape of a circle, so area circle. So let's start with the easy part, which is finding the area of a circle. The formula is going to be pi times r squared, and our radius is half 15, 7.5. So the formula gives us pi times 7.5 squared. 176.71 centimeters squared. Now for the slightly trickier part, the shaded area. Now the shaded area is the area that's left over after I cut out the square from the circle. Finding the area of the square is going to be difficult since we don't know the length of the sides. But we can see that this square is really just two triangles stacked one on top of the other. The base of one of those triangles is 15 and the height is 7.5 since the height of this triangle is the same as the radius of the circle. So the area of the square is going to be equal to two times the triangles, two triangles, the top one and the bottom one. The area of the triangle is base times height divided by two. Multiplying by two and dividing by two cancel out. So what I'm left with is base times height, the base being 15, the height being 7.5. Therefore, the area, of the, the area of the square is 15 times 7.5, which gives 112.5 centimeters squared. Cutting that out from the circle leaves us with shaded part equal to 176.71 minus 112.5, 64.21 centimeters squared. Finally, our probability will be that area of the shaded part, 64.21, divided by the total area of the circle, 176.71, and we multiply by 100 to turn that into a percentage, and we get 36%. Correct answer is therefore B. Question 5. What is the result of the following operation in proper scientific notation? So here the way this works is we multiply the numbers together and we do the exponential rule, the law of products on these tens, 
And what that gives us is by doing the numbers first together, we get 0.95 times 25.6. This gives us 24.32 times 10 to the power of the minus 5 and the, th and the 3. They combine, since we're multiplying, they combine by adding. So minus 5 plus 3 becomes minus 2. Now we're almost done. We just have to make sure that our decimal point is moved over so that it's in between the first two numbers on the left. If I move it over once to the left, then what happens is my power, I add one to it. So this gives us 2.432 times 10 to the power of minus two plus one, which is just minus one. So the correct final answer is C. Question six. In Brenda's science class, the calculation of her term marks are so shown in the table below. However, her test one mark is missing. What is Brenda's mark for test one? So here we're going to work backwards from the average to find the missing value, but we're also going to have to take into consideration the weighing of each grade. So here's how this works. We multiply the mark by its weighing and we add up all those marks multiplied to their weighings and it must come out to 71%. So what this means is 40%, which can be represented as 0 0.40 as a decimal, 40% times the grade 70 plus 15%, which is 0 0.15, times the mark of x, we don't know what that is, this is x, plus 25%, 0 0.25, times a mark of 73, plus 5%, 0 0.05, times a mark of 40, plus 5% again, 0 0.05, times a mark of 80, plus 10%, 0 0.10, times a mark of 90. All this added up together must give us 71%. On our calculators, we can clean this up a little bit. What I'll be doing is multiplying my numbers together and simplifying as much as possible. 0.4 times 70, that's 28. Plus 0.15 times x, plus 0.25 times 73, that's 18.25. Plus 0.05 times 40, that's two, plus 0.05 times 80, that's 4, plus 0.10 times 90, that's 9, equals 71. Now let's group like terms, all these numbers, all these number terms get added together. The only thing that does not get added is the term containing the x. So I have 0.15x plus all these terms added together will give me 28 plus 18.25 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 is 61.21. 61.25, sorry. It equals 71. I subtract 61.25 from both sides so that I can cancel it from my left hand side. This gives me 0.15x equals. 9.75. Now to get rid of the 0.15, I divide it on both sides. I divide both sides by 0.15, this cancels, and I'm left with x equals 65%. That was the missing grade, 65%, which is A.